folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Best of Publishers. Uh, today we're taking a look at Hansem Gluck. Now, Hansem Gluck is a German company that is one of the most famous German companies. They've done so many well-known games to the point where they will even do co-publications now with American companies that are very popular. They'll bring games over. And so sometimes when I do the German company, sometimes it's a little confusing to me which games were originally theirs and which ones they picked up from someone else. I think the ones on my list are originally from Hans and Gluck, but I might be wrong. Either way, some of the biggest games, this is an easy top 10 for me to do because they have so many big, fantastic games. Um, and I'm so glad that many companies, Real Grande and Z-Man in particular, have brought their games over to America so that we can play them because many of the games that Hans and Gluck have done basically were a revolution in board games. In the 90s, in the mid-90s, some really fantastic games uh, and gaming itself owes a lot to these games. So here we go. Number 10, Medina. This one was actually recently reprinted by Stronghold Games. This is an abstract strategy game in a sense, but it's also a theme. There's this city and you're putting these big giant wooden buildings and you're building this city. And as you place these buildings, eventually you want to take control of a building. But once you take control of a building, you can't make it bigger anymore. So there's a little bit of playing chicken there. And just as you put the buildings out, it's a really cool, neat game and looks beautiful too. Number nine is The Mocker. Now, The Mocker is uh, one of the oldest games from the 80s, actually. I think 89, maybe. Um, the Mocker is a game about the German elections, and I did not realize how confusing they were. Not that I can speak much with our electoral college. But the German elections here in this game, which is about a four-hour Euro game, which I don't normally want to play, but this one is so involving as each turn you're deciding what to do. Are you going to work with the media? Are you going to do this? Are you going to change this issue? And you're slowly over time trying to win the most votes to win the game, sometimes working with other players, but always trying to come out on top. A very deep, involved game, but a very good one. Number eight is Russian Railroads. Um, although I actually like the expansion German Railroads even better. But Russian Railroads is like straight up Euro. Barely the Russian theme, I mean the railroad theme there at all. You're placing workers and slowly building out your lines. And as you build out your lines, you're going to get points or benefits that will help you build out your other lines. And you have to decide which way is the most efficient to win the game. I don't think I've ever won this game because I keep playing people who are way smarter than me. And yet I like it a lot, Russian Railroads. Number seven is Bruges. I often get a rep on this channel of not liking Stefan Feld, and of course we make jokes that way, but I really do like a lot of his games. This is easily one of my favorites of his in this game because it has card play, and each card can be used to do various things. Negative things can happen to players, but you can kind of work up and try to stop those from happening. There's so many different cards, each card does something different, and there's different ways to score points like in many of his games, but it comes together in a really good package, Bruges. Number six for me is Manhattan. This game of building skyscrapers has been one of my favorites for years. I love the 3D look of the game as you're putting the pieces out and seeing the towers come up. As you play a card and say, okay, I can put a piece in this city, I can put on top of yours. There's a lot of back and forth with the other players. And the 3D look of it, of course, is great, but the actual gameplay itself is one of those games that's like, wow, this should want to spiel this yards. Well, it, it did. That's because it's a great game. Uh, number five is Carcassonne, another game that's one of Spielis Yars. Carcassonne is one of those games that so many people know about, what can I say? But the idea of laying out tiles, honestly, there's not that many games in this genre compared to other genres. And I think many times it's because Carcassonne did it so well. You put out a tile, you connect a city, build a road, build a farm. Very, very simple, easy game. It is still in print to this day because it is that popular. Number four is Amon Ray for me. Amon Ray is a great game which was just reprinted by Tasty Minstrel Games. Amon Ray is a game in which you are bidding each turn in a really controlled auction that I like on different properties and then you are building pyramids on those properties and using special cards to get different things. Basically building pyramids on properties. Halfway through the game, all the properties revert to neutral and you bid again but the pyramids stay there. So now the value of all the different auctions changes. Really, really enjoy this game, Amon Ray. Number three is St. Petersburg, which is really weird because when I first played St. Petersburg, I did not like it very much, but it's one of those games that for some reason I kept playing. And the more I played it, I liked it. Then I played the two-player version a lot. Really enjoyed the two-player version of St. Petersburg. The new version added a little bit of a commodities thing, which I thought was a nice addition to the game and really changed how things worked out. Really great addition. 
St. Petersburg, great game for two, but I don't even mind it with multiplayers these days. Number two is El Grande. I mean, what can I say? El Grande is just an amazing game. It's been one of my favorite games forever. The original area control game, it's just cubes on a map of Spain. But it's not just cubes, really. There's a deck of cards, and these cards you're going to use to play earlier to get more of the cubes into your stack. And then the expansions, there's two expansions for this. Uh, and, and they actually, now that I think they're in the El Grande Mega Box thing, they add and they make the game different, different and also good. And I, I find that fascinating. Uh, the game is mean, but at the same time, doesn't feel too mean. It's back and forth. I think it, it scales really well. Three, four, five players really like it, El Grande. And it would have been my number one, but recently another one has gone higher for me, and that is Marco Polo. Not a game for the swimming pool. Marco Polo, not really even a theme game. Because I know Marco Polo goes out and explores, and you have different explorers in this game. But this game is a normal Euro-style game where you're placing dice, using those dice to get different things, to get resources that you'll be trading in and doing different things with. But what makes the game phenomenally fun is each person has a special ability, and not some minor special ability, but what feels like a game-breaking special ability, except everyone has them. One person, instead of rolling the dice, puts their dice any number they want. One person, every time someone goes to the market and gets something, they also get something. And it's like, wow, that's the best ability in the game. But wait, yours is the best ability in the game. And it just comes together to make this really wonderful, great experience that I hope to be playing for years to come. So those are my 10 favorite games from Hans and Gluck. Like I said, I'm really glad they exist. I really think a lot of their games they made have changed the landscape of gaming. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. This has been Best of Publishers, Hans and Gluck. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.